What's up guys, this is Ray and welcome to Asia Filmist and today we'll be talking about the 2010 Japanese film Rinko's Restaurant directed by Tominaga Mai and starring Shibasaki Ko and Yokimiko. Rinko's Restaurant is definitely one of the most unique, uh, quirky Japanese films I've seen in recent years and it's about this girl by the name of, well, you guessed it, Rinko, played by Shibasaki Ko. And uh, at a very young age, I'd say when she was somewhere in high school, she leaves home and moves in with her grandma. Her grandma knows how to cook just about anything imaginable. And so growing up, Rinko watches her. She takes notes on everything that she makes. And uh, But then one day, Rinko's grandma passes away. And, you know, after she passes away, she starts, Rinko starts saving up to hopefully one day start her own restaurant. And along the way, she uh, meets and falls in love with this, she meets and falls in love with this Indian guy. Um, I guess the reason why she ends up falling in love with an Indian guy is because she falls in love with uh, anything that involves cooking curry. And curry is actually a pretty big part of a pretty big part of the story of Rinko's restaurant. But anyway, this Indian guy uh, basically steals everything that Rinko has been saving up to that point, leaving her with close to nothing. And this leaves Rinko with not only any money or even any belongings, but this also robs her of her voice. Like she gets so heartbroken that uh, she loses the ability to speak. And so without, mu without nothing much left to her, she decides to move back home to her home village. The name of this village is pretty funny. It's called Oppai Mura, which uh, basically translates to Booby Village. And it's, it gets its name from these two uh, large um, boob-shaped mountains. They even got the little, uh, little nipples up on top uh, that are basically uh, in viewing distance from the village. Anyway, she goes back home and she uh, moves back in with her mom, who's kind of this free-spirited, neg negligent parent who she hasn't really spoken to in uh, quite a few years, probably since the day she moved out, which was, I believe, 10 years before the event, the main events of the movie start happening. So she decides to take up shop in her home village and start her own restaurant there, her dream restaurant. But she, it's kind of a unique restaurant in the sense that it, uh, in each day, she only serves one party. Like, so it can be one person and a whole group of people. But anyways, it's just one party per day that she decides to serve. And the reason why she does that is so that way she can take the time leading up to mealtime to take the maximum amount of thought and care it needed to make uh, an epic meal, if you will. So let's jump into the positives of Rinko's restaurant. You know, first and foremost, the performances. I admire Shibasaki Ko as an actress. She usually does a wonderful job in, her, in the roles that she plays, and that's no exception here. And I think the challenge with Shibasaki Ko's character in Rinko's Restaurant is that she has little to no dialogue in the movie. I mean, there are some parts where she speaks, uh, she speaks before she le loses her voice, ultimately. But uh, for the majority of the film, I'd say about 95% of the movie, she is using a lot of body language and just writing everything on a little notepad to convey what she wants to say to anyone she talks to. And even though she has little to no dialogue in this movie, she still manages to deliver a magnetic and convincing performance. And I gotta give much love to Yo Kimiko, who plays Rinko's mother in this movie. She, uh, her, like I mentioned earlier, her character is kind of free-spirited and negligent in, in, in the sense that while uh, Rinko is growing up, she didn't really care much about her or take care of her of her. She kind of just led her own to her own devices, always talking down and degrading Rinko. And you know, that eventually leads to Rinko's decision on leaving the house. However, there are many layers to her character and you, you get to find out more once you dive into her backstory. But I thought Yokimiko also delivered an excellent performance. And just the chemistry between the two lead actresses, I thought it was fun and enjoyable to watch. And you get, you really do feel this kind of estranged uh, daughter and mother dynamic between them. And I think something that's probably the most eye-catching part of this movie is it's, you know, what can I say, quirky, quirky presentation. You know, um, first of all, there's quirky music that plays when you get introduced to Rinko towards the beginning of the movie. And the way the music, uh, the words in the music play out, they kind of narrate the backstory of Rinko. And it just not, it isn't only Rinko that gets this treatment. We also get to see it uh, when you dive into the mother's backstory. But every time they do that, it's funny, it's weird, it's cute. It's almost like something out of a children's picture book. In the sense that while uh, the, this quirky music is playing, you get kind of cardboard or paper cutouts of the character and different types of scenes in their environment 
uh, animated and moving along as a as a, the music narrates their story. And to top off the quirkiness, I mean, they live in this town called Booby Village. I mean, when every time they're just chilling on the mountaintop and they see the two Booby Mountains in the background. It's funny, it's weird, but it's part of the charm and I dug every single moment of it. And I dig the kind of mini stories within this movie. I mean like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Rinko decides to serve only one customer or one party at a time and they have to reserve ahead of time of course but each of these customers get their own kind of episode if you will their own story arc in the sense that uh you know you get introduced to them they have Rinko's food but uh they're, they're each of these characters are dealing with something that's bothering them. they're all they're each struggling with a problem and Part of the enjoyment of this movie is seeing how Rico's food affects everyone and how it helps them overcome their struggles, if you will. I mean, it's kind of weird to say that, but basically they, they paint up Rico's cooking to be this kind of uh, magical force, if you will, that, you know, it can bring uh, so anyone who eats it to tears. And by sheer luck, uh, it almost makes their wishes come true or something that the, uh, that's, uh, that's eating them up or that they want to accomplish. Uh, that they wish deeply for, it all comes true. Like take the first guy that Rinko cooks for, his name is Kuma or Bear, you know, Mr. Bear if you will. He's kind of as big as a bear but he's a uh, really funny, a really gentle character. Anyways, he helps Rinko move in to her new restaurant and in thanks she decides to let him be her first customer so she cooks him this wicked uh this wicked dish of curry and rice you know on the surface it's just like oh it's just just curry and rice but you know i'll dig right in but then it moves him to tears and it gets him to, rem uh, to think about his family who's moved out of his house uh so you know, as he goes home, he thinks about wanting to call his daughter uh, and his wife, but then just out of nowhere, his daughter calls him and just says, you know, I've been, I had this curry and rice and I was just thinking about you, dad. I just wanted to see how you were doing. And this, uh, this moves him and this moves him to tears even more. And you know, stuff like that, that I think makes each mini story arc all the more interesting. And to top it off, when each story arc concludes, uh, you get more of that quirky paper cutout presentation in the form of like just food coming out of nowhere and surrounding the frame and this dreamy music uh, just playing on the screen and it's cheesy as all hell but it's fun and of course the food I mean Rinko she's the only chef in her restaurant and you get to see her progress as she makes pretty much everything from scratch and uh, you know from 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 the beginning to the finished product it's fun watching her make it but you know the food not, it's not only the food itself that takes the center stage as I mentioned earlier it's the way her food affects all her customers and like I mentioned earlier you get to see people get moved to tears you get to see people climb out of depression you even get to see people stop being total assholes each each customer has each uh, each dish has a different effect on the customer that she presents it to when it comes to the minuses of Rinko's restaurant you know I thought the tempo at times you know granted the because Rinko doesn't speak much dialogue you get a whole lot of scenes that go on with just uh, background music playing. And you know, I think, I personally think it's peaceful. You know, it's nice to watch everything just move and animate on screen. However, it does tend to drag on just a little bit at certain times. And lastly, I thought, you know, seeing Rico grow as a chef, we didn't really get much of it, I felt. When it comes to showing uh, how Rinko comes and grows as a chef, you know, she takes uh, notes in her notebook, uh, watching her grandma cook different recipes. And you know, and. Uh, we also get to see her baking some uh, some loaves of bread and uh, and feeding it to her mom's pet pig. And you know, in the beginning, her pet pig doesn't want to have anything, but eventually, we see the pet pig uh, come to eat more and more of Rinko's cooking. And that's pretty much it. You know, then suddenly she prepares all these fancy, exotic-looking dishes. I wish there was some kind of like uh, area which she explores and experiments with different types of recipes and cook and different cooking. So that way we kind of we can kind of see more of a gradual progression rather rather than just a sudden change. But overall, what did I think of Rinko's restaurant? You know, I enjoyed it. It's a whimsical movie and it has as much quirkiness as it does have emotional weight to the story. And when the story dives into its emotional turns, you know, particularly when you dive into the backstories of uh, Rinko, her mom, and some of the other characters, it does a good job at keeping you engaged and keeping you emotionally invested so that way you want to know more about what's happening. And there is a wonderful variety of uh, likable characters uh, likable supporting characters, all whom which get proper uh, get proper focus when the story arc comes. And above all else, I think it's just interesting seeing 
the different ways Rinko's cooking has on each of our customers. And so yes, those are my thoughts on Rinko's restaurant. Leave your thoughts and your questions in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you dig my content, please know that you can always support Asian Filmist on Patreon uh, from as little as $1. And that's it for me, guys. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.